We've looked at the patch common parameters on the left and right sides and the bottom of the edit page that affect the overall patch. And in this video, I'm going to show you the anatomy and the architecture of how the basic patches are set up within Omnisphere. Now, each patch can contain one or two oscillators, and we can switch between those here with layer A and layer B. Now, in either layer, the oscillator can be either sample-based or synth-based, depending on what you have selected here. And when it's synth-based, it's based on a basic waveform, either a square wave, triangle, sine, or noise type of waveform. And when it's sample-based, we go into the sound source browser and we select from a variety of preset mapped sample sets called sound sources that we can use as the basis for forming our sounds. Now, the basic idea is this. We select the sounds that are going to be contained in layer A or layer B over here. And in this middle section, we can shape the sound in a variety of ways. For example, with the synth type of oscillator, we select the basic waveform here. And then we can select a variety of the parameters here to shape the sound. And we can apply different types of synthesis. We have FM synthesis. We have ring modulation, wave shaping synthesis. And we have a voice multiplier with several different modes. And these are all ways of shaping the basic waveform or sound source. So basically, we select the synth oscillator waveform that we want to use. We set the settings in a variety of ways as we want using these different types of synthesis. And we can save these as presets from this drop-down menu here. We can load in some of the factory ones or save our own. And this basically saves the actual oscillator and the state of all of these various controls that we use to shape the sound. Now, in the basic journey of a patch, we sculpt the basic sound here. We run it through a filter, and this is the filter section over here. And in subtractive synthesis, generally, we carve away certain frequencies of the sound by cutting off certain frequencies below or above a certain point and maybe emphasizing other points with these controls here. We'll look at them all in detail. But we sculpt the overall frequency response of the sound. So we set the basic oscillator settings here with the various types of synthesis, run it through a filter, and then it's set to an output or an amp section. And that involves things like setting the amp envelopes, the attack, decay, sustain, release portion of the sounds. It involves things like mixing the different levels and panning them. And we can add effects onto layer A or layer B separately or some effects that'll affect the entire patch altogether. And finally, it's output to the multi-page over here, which is kind of like an eight-channel mixer. We have controls for each of the eight parts. We set the MIDI channel, mute solo, the output. If we're going to have multiple output, we have level control, pan, aux, sends, kind of like a little mixer. So getting back to the edit page here, our basic architecture is this. Sculpt the sound over here, run it through a filter, and run it through the amp section. Now, where it gets really interesting is we can modulate any of the parameters. And what I mean by modulate is change them over time. Now, there are different types of modulation sources, different ways of affecting the settings of any of these parameters over time. We can do that in several ways. One is from outside of Omnisphere by playing gestures, for example, velocity on your keyboard or using a control surface with MIDI CC sliders. We can send messages like that to influence some of these parameters over time. Another way to do it is within Omnisphere, and we can use envelopes. And what an envelope is, is basically a preset shape that we can use to modulate or alter any of the parameters over time. Now, in the envelope section over here, we have different modes. We have an amp envelope, which affects the actual basic oscillator of the sound itself. We have a dedicated filter envelope, which is used to modulate the cutoff of the filter in a variety of ways. We'll get through all this. And we have separately assignable modulation envelopes that we can use. They're kind of like freely assignable envelopes or shapes that we can use to control any parameter we want. Now, another way to modulate sound is with LFOs. And that's, again, a way of applying a preset shape to any of these parameters so that they can be moved over time or changed over time. And we have a dedicated modulation section over here where we can view and manage any of these modulation routings and edit them and alter them. And the third way of controlling sounds dynamically over time or aspects of the sounds over time is with automation in your host sequencer. So let me just summarize here. We have our basic oscillator that we set here. And when we're working with sample-based sound sources, it's pretty much the same thing. The controls in the main section are different. We'll go through them all, but we can apply FM synthesis, ring modulation, wave shaping, and different types of voice multiplier settings to them. So we basically sculpt the sound here, run it through a filter, go to the amp output section, and anywhere in between, we can modulate any of these parameters 
that we're using to sculpt the sound. We can modulate them either with envelopes. We have the amp envelope, the filter envelope, or freely assignable modulation envelopes, and there's four of them for each layer. We can modulate them using LFOs, and we can modulate them using things like modulation wheel on your keyboard velocity or sliders on a control surface. And we can also modulate aspects of a sound using automation within the host sequencer. So let me give you a little demonstration just to show you some of this, because it's pretty abstract when you think of it alone. Let's say I'll go to layer A and make it a synth-based sound. And let me sculpt it a little bit. I'll turn on the filter, and I'll choose one of the presets. And we'll go through all these, but there are various types of presets to choose from, and they operate a dual filter section that we get at in this filter zoom. So I've got a classic acid kind of resonant sweep kind of sound. And let's say I'm going to adjust the filter envelope here. So it's ramping up more slowly because of the attack time. And I can have it decay more slowly. Or decay more sharply. Here's the way it cuts off really abruptly. I don't like that. So let's have a bit of a slower decay. And now let's go to the amp envelope and we can adjust the release or the overall contour of the sound. Let me lower the volume here for layer A and I'll play some chords and notice that when I take my finger off the keyboard, the notes end really abruptly. Let's increase the release time, make it a slower release and you'll hear them die off more naturally. And finally, let's add some effects in the amp section. I'll go there and we're in layer A. So let's click hold there and I'll go down to a delay effect. Let's add that in. I'm just gonna leave a default setting for now. So very quickly, we've constructed a patch by just using a simple oscillator, adding a filter in and modulating the filter cutoff using the filter envelope and adjusting the decay a little bit here, or the release rather, and then adding some effects on, and we have a simple sound. So that's the basic architecture of how patches are set up in Omnisphere. In the next videos, we're going to go through in more detail these different types of synthesis and how the different sections work.